Welcome back to Thespis in the Green Room. It's Bruce and Melanie here. And today we're taking a look back at some of the highlights from our previous episodes featuring Rodrice Cardell, the mad artist, as a tribute to our friend and colleague. Rodrice was an absolute force in our community and an inspiration to so many. He was a singer, songwriter, visual artist, performance artist, actor, and mentor. His work can often be seen in the galleries at the Artists Collective in Spartanburg. He is also the artist behind the letter R in the Black Lives Matter mural on Broad Street outside of Spartanburg City Hall. Rodrice was featured on two previous Thespis episodes. Our one-on-one episode was published March 28, 2019, and he was also on the panel for the roundtable discussion on race and theater parts one and two, published July 30th, 2020. These episodes are still available to hear on our website or through most podcast players. Rodrice passed away in January of this year, 2021. Here are some of the memorable moments from his interviews here on Thespis. I fell in love with a stage when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Um, I was performing at Westview Elementary. Um, That's all a part of uh, District 6. And um, they had me in this like drug free program. But what we used to do, we used to take little skits and everything and, and, and songs and put performances on at our school. This is a testament, people, <laughs> to keeping the arts in the school. Well, it's important because at the end of the day, I was always trying to not be in the street and doing, right. you know, negative things because I was surrounded by it as a kid. Right. And so you have this child that's trying his best not to get involved in the surroundings and trying to beat the system. Mm-hmm. And so in order for me to do that, I had to be introduced to the arts. I had to be introduced to something else outside of the culture that I lived in. Mm-hmm. And so that was me trying to fight. And I think that's really important for those kids. So at the end of the day, what happened was throughout going through college and getting out to tour professionally and everything, I noticed as an artist, I I had to grow financially also. Mm-hmm. And so it was always important for me to be able to, OK, I'm getting out of this, this, this show. Let me make sure that I have something else backed up. And so when I moved back from Minnesota, I noticed that there was a need for a music scene here in the Spartanburg area. Mm. Um, I had noticed that it was only one sided and there was a culture that wasn't being tapped into. And here I, I wanted to perform my music, but there were no bars or no performance venues for me to perform at. And it made it really difficult for me to book shows. Mm. Um, and so I pretty much came up with this idea because I had already started painting how about I start doing this on the street and how about I take the everything that I learned within theater and understanding what guerrilla theater is and understanding in order for people to realize that there's something bubbling in their culture, you have to throw it right in their face. Mm -hmm. And I, I decided that it was really important for me to make a stance to say, hey, there's a culture that's not being tapped in here. But in order for me to get where I need to go, I'm going to take something that everyone can enjoy at once, which is me painting on the sidewalk. And for me to get that buzz in order to make a mark, in order for those doors to open, for them to understand that there's a culture that is missing in this area. Mm. Someone has to make it clear that, hey, there's a culture of people that we're missing. There's Mm -hmm. a culture of art that we're missing and we need it here. And I want to I want to really be a part of that movement and and help make that happen for other artists. Mm. Because I feel like people expect artists to kind of be one sided. It's either you're going to be a painter or that's it. You're going to be a musician or that's it. But what if you're all of them? Mm -hmm. So it made it really difficult for me to find my lane because I've spent all my life perfecting my craft in every form. If I'm doing music, I'm perfecting that in every form. If I'm doing acting on stage, I want to perfect that in every form. Like it it just doesn't stop for me because I've become reliant on my talent to feed me. Mm. And so in order for me to make any type of shift, I constantly have to make people aware that the mad artist is one thing. Mm. 
I'm I'm a complete brand by within that. And that's why the mad artist is important because there's other gifted artists out there, mm-hmm. but they only get put into one lane. And right. I have to make it clear that I am I want to show my showcase all my talent. And as far as like when people see me out in public as a performance artist, the mad artist is a, it allows me to t- tap into myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a performance artist is to stay true to what I do is I have to always be honest with myself. And so the way the performances start off is I'm playing music. Um, and that's not just my music, but other artists that I have been inspired by their story. And so I have those music, those records playing while I pull out a canvas in the middle of the street or wherever performance space that I'm at. And I put that helmet on in order for me to be able to tap into myself and be able to have balance when I create on a canvas. Um, it's always something that's organic. It's always something where I'm I'm vibing to the music and using the vibrations from the music in order to orchestrate a a a piece. So my my biggest slogan is turning chaos into beauty. Mm. Um and I think that's where my life is, you know, where I've been through a lot of stuff where I'm always trying to see the color at the end of the the rainbow or just in in order to be able to see more positivity within my own life. Um so that's what I do. I, I take a madman that, you know, uses paint, that uses music in order to get people to see that it all there's always a bigger picture within because it's a process. Mm. That process of creating is natural and it's organic and everyone can be an artist, but it's only so many of us that choose this lifestyle and that's it. Yeah. And all through your life, you are always constantly here. Hmm. You sure you want to be an artist? Yeah. Yes, indeed. It doesn't stop. So you kind of touched on this a little bit. Can you expand a little bit? What inspires you to create? Who are your inspirations? What are your inspirations? What drives you to do this? So um, when I first started really painting is because um, it was uh, this young lady uh, that I had met, and she always painted African-American women with afros and i just always remember just kind of being fascinated with that because you know there's not a lot of you know around the area especially with me as an artist i was like oh i don't know anybody you know around my age that were creating you know art that looked like them and you know and so she kind of inspired me to pick up a paintbrush because i was like well there's also other things that i would like to paint and um, so I kind of I kept doing that for a full year and then I, I got sick. Um, and this is right around the same time I ended up going down on a bike accident. And so painting was the only way for me to pay for me to survive. And so I used that constantly. I'm, I'm painting to pay a bill. I'm, I'm painting to be here. And so I I hold on that constantly because it's real. And it also helped me get through anxiety. It helped me also get through depression. It helped me also get overcome PTSD. And so I paint in order to save myself I, or I paint in order to create for myself. I create for myself first and then it's for others to to partake in and watch that process. It's therapy. Mm. So um, and I encourage anybody out there that's looking for an outlet or looking to um, grow within themselves is always picking up something else. Uh, you know, watch YouTube. I I constantly just kept painting all year and every year, every day, just constantly kept painting, kept painting because painting is what I felt like would save me at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So that's why I constantly continue to do that because I know that there's kids out there, there's adults out there that may not have anything to look forward to. And so creating gives them that every day. It finds a new light within yourself because when you're painting, you have to spend time with yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's no other, unless you allow it, other distractions to come into that circle, 
unless you spend time with yourself in order to get whatever is frustrating you out or whatever it is that you just need to put that into something else. Even if it's not a conversation back and forth with someone else, you're spending time with self. Mm. And that allows you to create the best thing because you admire something that came out of you. Constantly trying to get people to pay you for your service Mm. um, and see that it is a business at the end of the day and it's not a charity, Mm -hmm. you know, and having to make sure that other artists know how to have that conversation to sit down. Now we're talking business. This is the black and white of everything. In order to do that, you have to understand the business world. And I think that's something that lights thereof here, giving the artist the knowledge to run their their business. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them give up. A lot of them go somewhere else. And it's very easy for artists to pack up and move to New York or L.A. And I think that's the story of all artists that end up, you know, I want to make it. And they go out there. Sometimes they make it. Sometimes they don't. But what about those artists that do stay around? How are you? You know, making sure that they're a part of the conversations of growth and they're a part of the conversations of being paid, because I think people constantly want artists to give their gifts up for free. And you don't know what it took for them to even arrive and be at that mm. event or to be at that table to talk, because some artists do have day jobs and they take off right? in hopes to further what they have going on. Mm-hmm. And so I want to be a part of that conversation because this is what I do. Right. And I'm building a brand just like any business that is here or uh, around the world. Yeah. What kind of things do you do to provide guidance? Because you are in a mentor relationship. Uh, well, one thing that I focus on is mental health. Because that's what it really starts with is mental health. And then also what Clark was talking about being taught the history and have the right history and having a full understanding of that history. Because there's so many gaps within the things in our education system that has been left out of the textbooks. So a lot of those students suffer from not actually being able to get the proper information. And I mean, yeah, you can go on Google, try to Google something. But if if, if, if the teachers aren't inst- instilling them the right information, then it, they're lost. But if we can focus on the mental health aspect of it. Um, and let's talk about our feelings and let's talk about why you feel this way and why has it been set up systematically for you to fail. And so we can pull through that. And that mental health aspect of it has been missing. Um, and if even in like, you know, Zoom calls, or, you know, with everyone transitioning because of COVID, you know, that type of stuff needs to be happening. Where are you right now? What's your thought process? And why are you, how are you handling these things that are upsetting you? How are you... Uh, What's your outlet? If they don't have outlets in place for them to express themselves, then they do start acting out in violence or doing those other things because they don't have any, any, any structure. But I, I think that's where it really needs to happen because you only can break trauma down if you, if you actually hit it head, head, head first. And that's where it really lays down because they, they feel uncomfortable to talk about those things. If you're going to bring up my demons or you're going to bring up things that uh, hinder me in life, you know, you're opening up uh, this can of worms of like uh, of what they may be dealing with, the, the trauma and everything. But what is happening in, in, the, in their homes and what is helping them? Because you can open up that can of worms, but are you, what are you going to do later on? Because now there's no one there to assist them with the, the things that they've had dealt with. And so a lot of them don't want to talk about those issues because there's no one else to help them cope with those issues. You know, I think every day the highlights are when I when I get off a stage and there's some kid asking for my signature. And, you know, I remember just like, this is funny. Like someone's actually coming up to me and wanting to. Show in a way, show me their appreciation for what I've been gifted with. And I think at the end of the day, that has inspired them. Um, I have so many kids that come up to me all the time, like, I started painting now. Or and it just blows my mind. Like, wow, some some kids saw my show and now that's inspired them to paint. Or if they've seen me on a you know a stage, you know, being an actor or, you know, doing my music and that's inspired them to want to do something and it's given them a second chance of, of life or so in a way. 
it, it gives them that inspiration. So I think those are the highlights that happen because somehow and while I'm here, I've inspired someone to do something that that may change their life forever. Mm. And so I think that's the biggest accomplishment. It, it doesn't matter about the money or that any type of other success. It's man, I was able to inspire someone while I was here. I think that's more of a testament than any other thing, anything else. We just wanted to take some time to remember Rodriguez and his contributions to the arts community. He is greatly missed. Thank you for listening. Until next time.